We want to thank Next Level Marketing for being our opening sponsor on the podcast. If you have social media that you use for marketing, you need to check out Next Level Marketing and follow them on Facebook. You can also reach them at Gary Bontrager Consulting on our website, www.garybontrager.com. They will do a free audit for you and check out what your social media, how it's performing, what loopholes there are, and how you can tighten it up and be more effective with your marketing. They will help put strategies together to use organic growth to maximize the dollars that you do spend. We appreciate them being an associate sponsor with us on this Mindset Growth Podcast and enjoy what they do for us. This is a company that we work with and we endorse, and we don't take that lightly. I want to welcome you to another episode of Mindset Growth Podcast. I'm Gary Bontrager, your host. I have Heather, my co-host, here with me today. We are very excited for our guest here. Uh, we've just gotten to know him in the last number of months or maybe in the last year, and uh, it's been fun to work with him, uh, be on co- podcasts, but more in a uh production role. So behind the scenes today, we get to meet the wonderful Wes Wyatt. Welcome. Hey guys. Hey Wes. So why don't we open How you guys up? Doing today? Oh, great. It's a great day in Iowa city and yes, they're watering the flowers outside. So that's always, <laughs> always a good start to the day. Um, why don't you just tell us a little about yourself and, and how you grew up? Well, uh, I, I don't know if I've grown up yet. Uh, you know, I know Randy uses that joke, uh, whenever people talk to him, but, uh, I, I grew up in, uh, pretty much a lot of different places, uh, as, as I was, uh, you know, coming up, I was born in Chicago and, uh, went from there to Indiana and then from Indiana to Ohio. And that's pretty much where I stayed in my youth and, uh, I did, uh, you know, just the usual stuff that everyone does. I mean, I was a paper boy. I think just about everybody that you ever talk to that has any sort of entrepreneurial you know, spirit either started a paper boy and or McDonald's, right. uh, you know, it seems like the, there's only two stories uh, or both, uh, which I actually did both uh, at some point in my life. But uh, I did that and then uh, kind of got into security uh, in case you ever hear uh, Randy talk about his sometimes bodyguard. I'm a WWE <laughs> size guy. So uh, security just kind of seemed like a good idea. Um, I was basically doing it anyway for my friends. So I figured why not get paid for it? And, uh, I lived in Daytona beach, uh, for five years during the heyday of spring break. Um, any movie that you've ever seen with a spring break title, I probably was, you know, in the background somewhere, you know, throwing people around, but, uh, uh, did that. And then, uh, when I got tired of, uh, having people follow me home and, you know, close doors behind me on third ship jobs and things like that. I decided that it might not be a bad idea to get into tech. Um, I'd always had computers as a um, kind of a passion. And uh, I got into tech and kind of the customer service side of things and technical support side of it uh, more than anything. And then kind of made my way up through a company that uh, used to be on the price is right and a couple other things when they would show computer systems and um got to do some modeling with them which is kind of funny uh i was captain crazy held a uh a steel chair above my head for three hours during a photo shoot and oh, ended up being be in three of their ads up. but what was that again Heather? we will be looking that one up i'll, I'll send it to you guys okay. so that uh, you're able to show it but uh i think that that'll was, be our uh, cover that photo was, <laughs> be your cover photo yeah it's my uh it's actually my twitter photo if you guys uh really want to see it if you go to uh, Twitter uh, forward slash uh, Wes Wyatt. I, I think it's my cover photo. Okay, but uh, it's it was something that um, I, I really really enjoyed, and so I kind of got to go from a uh, very low you know point job, uh, and you know there's nothing wrong with technical support and customer mm-hmm. service. It's just it's it was the entry level at that particular place. I worked my way all the way up into the web team and. Uh, doing some of the the high level marketing and uh a guy come up to me and said that uh, he wanted me in the marketing department and i said i don't think that i'm that that person and he said well just interview and so i went down and very cockily told the person that uh give me the worst job you have and i will do it 
and, and do well at it. And he said, uh, oh, yeah. And and, kind of, and I, I saw the twinkle in his eye and I knew that he immediately had a job that, you know, was was exactly that. And it ended up being, if you guys remember the old plug and play on the front of uh, um, uh, any uh, PCs, it would say, you know, uh, um, Windows 2000 qualified or something to that nature. It was usually like the little Windows symbol. Right. And then if you bought something that was like a modem or a hard drive or something, if it had that symbol, that meant that theoretically they would talk to each other and, and it would be immediate uh, uh, something that it quite literally plug and play. And the thing behind that is called WICL, uh, one of those acronyms. It stands for uh, Windows Hardware Quality Labs. And so I used to go out to uh, uh, Seattle on a pretty regular basis to Microsoft. And uh, that was just an amazing job and met my wife uh, in that particular uh, uh, position because I had just been uh, Captain Crazy in the, in the, <laughs> the, the ad. And so one of my friends had to... Um, go out with a, a girl but had to have a chaperone because he was kind of a high up exec and she said you know you, you need to go out with with uh jim's friend wes and he was just in the ad and uh jules said uh, wasn't that big ball guy is it <laughs> so uh jokes on her though she married me but uh um and then you know just uh have have gone through you know various forms of marketing you know pretty much since then that was in 2000 and uh i've i've done marketing and, and computers and things like that ever since so you shoot a lot of podcasts for other folks as well right now i do i yeah. do i do the penalty box live which is uh another couple mega minders uh the gentleman that started it eric bam and uh tim lord uh do the penalty box live i do that one and then uh um, that's kind of how Randy and I come about. Uh, he really liked the the fact that they were able to go through and, um, like you said at the beginning of the broadcast, uh, you know, with yourself and Heather, I'm usually the guy behind the scenes. Randy's right. the the talent, if you will, and I'm just you know the the wizard, you know, kind of pulling the strings and putting the the uh, comments and you know all the pictures and and mm -hmm. transitions and whatnot over over the screen. And he said, you know, I could really use that. Uh, because I want to have full attention on the the um, guest that I'm talking right. to, and I said I can help. You know, so uh, you know, Randy, being that guy that's a uh, uh, hybrid road warrior, decided that during COVID he didn't have a way to go out and talk to his his folks, so he really you know wanted a way to to be able to do that, and like I said, have that genuine uh um interview with them where he wasn't looking down and trying to right. figure out you know where mm -hmm. things were on the screen and whatnot and you guys know that because you you sit there and do it in front right. of you uh it can get a little daunting mm -hmm. sometimes right. and uh he didn't want to take away from any sort of um uh genuine you know interest right. in, in what the pro uh, people were talking about so you know, he just said hey how would you like to do that and uh, then we started talking about doing books together and all sorts of things. And, uh, yeah, again, yeah, it brings you to today. That's awesome. I, uh, you bring up a lot of stuff and we're not getting too far. We're still on our first question for you, but <laughs> you know, uh, I see he's written a book now. Are you co-authoring that with him? Uh, the way that we're going to do it and, uh, it, it's, it's kind of, uh, uh, ambitious, but it's, it's going to happen. Uh, this year, we we actually had planned on doing it uh, by the end of last year. But uh, the way that we're going to do it is I'm writing a separate book. Randy is writing a separate book. And then what we're going to do is we will be co-authoring the Building Wind series. Um, and then uh, we'll plan on doing a, a book a year. So it'll be very okay. chicken soup of the soul like. So yeah. every one of them will have uh, the first one will, of course, be Building Winds. And then after that, it'll be Building Winds for you know, teachers, marketers, right. uh, you know, kindergarten teachers. It, right. it doesn't matter what it is. It, it'll have a, a slant to every book. Okay. Excellent. So we're in graduation season right now, and kids are trying to figure out what they want to do going forward if they haven't already gotten a good idea. But that just makes me wonder, you yourself, did you, are you self-taught with all of this? Your marketing, your, your technical, your everything uh, computer related? 100%. Uh, the only thing that that got me a, a little bit of a of a goose, if you will, uh, Heather, was uh, when I was in that position where I was Captain Crazy and and had worked my way up into the the marketing and web team. Uh, like a lot of companies, uh, we found out through the grapevine. Uh, our boss come to us and said, 
uh, we're going to lunch. And he he wasn't the kind of guy who who called a all hands on deck kind of a meeting. And he said, uh, you know, we're going off site. Uh, just be prepared. Uh, you know, I've got some news for you. And they had had some things going on personally that we thought it might involve. But then he sat down and said, uh, guys, I hate to tell you this, but uh, you are being replaced. Uh, the, the people that are buying the company are bringing in their own people. You're going to be training them for your job. <laughs> and so he said, uh, unless it is outlandish to the point that, you know, I, I have scrutiny, you know, that's immediate, you know, brought upon me. Uh, if you need a book, a course, a you know, whatever, get it and I will prove it. So um, you can't probably see one because I think it's literally right out of frame. But uh, I went through and got every, you know, HTML, uh, you know, coding, you name it. If it had something to do with marketing or or, or computers, I, I ordered the books and went to a couple. Uh, um, back then it was called, uh, I don't know, um, it, it doesn't even matter. I can't even think what it was called back then, but you'd you'd remember it. And I went to a couple couple classes, but that that stuff was so antiquated. Once I got out of it, to be totally frank with you, the stuff I learned from that particular experience was pretty much it, it, this this industry changes just I mean so insanely fast that the stuff they were teaching was almost antiquated before it even was coming out of their mouth. But uh, most of the stuff has been through. Um, just uh, YouTube, Skillshare, you know, d- online learning. Uh, I, I don't have a degree in it. Yeah, sure. It seems like a lot of kids anymore, though, are they're going to school, some of them, but a lot of them are going into trades or just, you know, if they're not certain about what they're doing, it's they're taking a little bit more of your path. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think work ethics will take people a long distance. I mean, that's really what it comes back to. But it's a it's a very hard industry to have a a, a a training for because even you know if you're getting into computer security or something like that where there's a constant onslaught of of new viruses and challenges that are coming that you have to learn and and they're actually on top of it it'd be one thing but when you're talking about coding and um, you know video courses and things like that I mean let's be honest if you have a, a phone uh, you, you're a, you're a, a newspaper, a, a television studio, a, a radio station. I mean, you're all that. I mean, I remember in, gosh, was it maybe 1989, 1990, uh, the, the movie uh, Pump Up the Volume come out with uh, Christian Slater, if you guys remember that movie. <laughs> yes. And he was a pirate radio guy. And uh-huh. I remember just leaving that and thinking, you know, I, I could do that. You know, I, I, I ha- think I actually had the stuff that I could actually get away with that, not in the in the form of a, a radio signal necessarily, but I thought I could probably do that on the web. And it really kind of made a an immediate uh, um, you know, impression upon me that, you know, you really have all this at your hand. And now, I mean, it's, it's you know, right. it, it just exponentially different than it was then. Right. Well, let's move along a little bit. Do you have a morning routine? I do. Um, I don't get up to an alarm. I'd like to tell you that I'm one of those guys that gets up at four in the morning and you know, does more than everybody else before they wake up. But I, uh, I get up, you know, when I get up, uh, unless I have something like this and I, I will set an alarm just in case that's that one day that, you know, through you know, the grace of God, something doesn't wake me up. Uh, it's rare. I, I will tell you that I ever get to sleep past, you know, eight, eight thirty probably. And that's late. But uh, I do, I get up and uh, I usually have coffee and answer emails and just kind of go through. And I I don't really zero out my day, if you will, but I try to get the stuff that was pressing the day before addressed uh, in the morning. And and, uh, that's pretty much how I start. Well, we just find a lot of people have routines a lot of times when they're successful and especially entrepreneurial folks need to um, just to kind of keep their schedule and keep the important things completed, but, uh, so yeah, I let you down with that. No, <laughs> no not that's at great all. answer. I'm just letting her take the next question. <laughs> yeah. My morning routine is basically the same. You just get up, make your bed, have some coffee, you know, help kids get ready for school, whatever the day may bring. And, but, um, we're going to move on to the rapid fire questions, which you didn't see these ones. So, Oh, Oh yeah. This one is related to what we see in your background there. So what superhero do you most identify with? 
I like Batman. Uh, and I like Batman not because of you know probably the reasons that you liked him as a kid. I just I I love the idea that somebody can be just professional and uh, hardworking. And I know that that might be a corny answer, but you know Superman has got uh, you know special powers, and you know uh, Iron Man has a you know suit that you know is all you know strength through through machines. But with with Batman, he's just rich and smart. You know, and hardworking. <laughs> I just, I think that uh, you know, if if, uh, if there is a a kind of work ethic to go after, it's that one. Yeah, I mean, you don't see him watching TV. You see him working out and you know, fighting crime and and doing what's right. And I, I kind of dig that. And being inventive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it really had. There's no special powers. I mean, yeah. it's just uh, you know, I it, it it's essentially having the idea. It, it, it'd be like me right now if I said, you know, I'd really like. You know this, and instead of going to you know uh, uh, you know a muse you know that Batman might have, I go to Fiverr. Yeah, you know, I mean it really is is no different. I mean it's just scaled up, you know, from from what I can do. And you're kind of in your bat cave there, right? I am, and I call this the <laughs> war room. You know, I, I say that jokingly all the time. You know, the, the coming live from the infamous war room because I feel like when I come down here, it's 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 kind of funny. You guys mentioned a. A morning routine so i guess there is a lot more to it uh you know i keep the stuff that's around me fun and i think i do it for a lot of reasons number one i, I never did grow up i mean i still don't know what i want to do but i think that i just like to keep fun around me you know i enjoyed this stuff as a kid to be totally frank with you it's not a sad story it's just i couldn't afford this stuff when i was little you know so now i get it and i like to have it around me because it's what i like so uh when i come down here it's it's not you know you know literally war uh but you know this is where all the action happens and so that's why i call it the war room and that's you know why i i love the this is my area and i know that when i'm down here it's time to get down and work that's a good answer i uh i think so many times though the fact of the matter is we really have three stages of life that set our total uh course for us and, you know, zero to seven, we're just a sponge. We just take in all the information that's put in front of us. We don't know what food we like and don't like. We just eat everything. Seven to 13, we start to figure out our reason and, you know, what things we like and start to make some decisions in that. And then we basically at 13 to 25 hit puberty. And from 25 on, we really, for the most part, people react to everything they experienced in those first 25 years. So with work and effort, folks can change some of that and overcome some of that. But I, I resonate and I say all that to just say this, and I want listeners to understand this. It's interesting. Sometimes the things we experience in our childhood or when we're younger, and you just mentioned things you couldn't afford to have. And I think a lot of kids or adults now can relate to that when they were kids. And I think sometimes you hear the phrase, you know, well, we should just, you know, I need to grow up. And I don't really think that's the fact so much. I think if that was our foundation, we need to enjoy the things we enjoyed that created our foundation. And I think so often people get lost and feel lost when they hit their 40s and their midlife crisis because they've let all the fun behind and they've just focused on work and all these other things and they really haven't taken any time to enjoy the process and the path that that they got thrown into you know from there forward so that's where it's fun to interview folks like you and i appreciate that wes and i hope just for listeners i'm just throwing this in for some educational purpose for them but it's it's a great thing uh and it's okay to go back i mean i i know there's things i do just simply because i couldn't do it when i was young and some of them are Stupid and expensive, but they're going to be fun. <laughs> well, I do magic as an example. And, really? Uh, very, very, you know, amateur. But uh, it's just one of those things that uh, the reason I do it, I think, is because, number one, it's just a dynamite, you know, icebreaker, first and foremost. I mean, it, it, it can be cringy, uh, you know, where if you have somebody come up and, and they're they're absolutely annoying, uh, you know, that can be no fun. But when somebody hits you, and does it correctly, mm -hmm. it can be probably one of the most just event changing times for that moment, of course. I mean, I'm not talking about, 
you know, if we're remembering it like, you know, JFK dying or, you know, 9-11 or something like right. that. But uh, it is a just, you know, people will say, remember that time? And I remember, you know, literally the very first time that I ever had somebody, you know, talk to me or, or do anything with magic. And it it literally blew my mind to the point that I thought, you know, I went from quite literally thinking, who is this person to, I probably, if I had a child at the time would have, you know, named them, you know, for Rumpelstiltskin, you know, the, the, the old, uh, uh, you know, fairy tale. Cause I was just like, anything you want, it's yours. I mean, I got to find out how you did this. And, uh, you know, so for that, it's another thing that, you know, just kind of, it seems childish, but it, the reason I do it is because if you do it correctly, the looks and the feelings that people have yeah. are just so childlike. And so just like they forget the, whatever's going on, you can tell that for that moment, they're just absolutely in their own world and little kids again. And it's a really neat feeling, you know? So I think if you don't keep that, that, uh, that spark and that, that thing that, that kind of makes you, um, you know, feel like a kid again, it, it, there's, there's just no fun in that. I mean, I don't know why anybody would want to grow up. I did see or read a, a touching story on your Facebook about getting to meet your mentor in magic when you were in Vegas. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, that was, gosh, amazing story. Uh, I, I went to Vegas with my mom. Uh, and if this is the one you're talking about, I, it yeah, almost has to so. be. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Um, and boy, you, you did a deep dive. Right? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, I, it, we went to, uh, we went to Vegas and, uh, now, now you know, really only, now, you know now you know why I don't get away with anything. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. No, that's, a, that's amazing. Uh, no. And I, I, I'm more than, more than proud to, to, to share the story. Um, that we, yeah, we went to Vegas and, uh, I really only wanted to see one, one, uh, one duo and it was Siegfried and Roy. And uh, we went and they were dark, uh, which means they, they you know, weren't having shows. But somebody said, you know, you can go to the secret garden that took to the Mirage, which is where they were at for you know years. And uh, that's where they keep all the animals, you know, for the show. And so uh, we went back there and you had to pay to, to walk through and uh, they would give you these um, uh, units that you carried around with you. And when you would get to a, a exhibit, there would be a number you would punch and it would tell you, you know, what was mm -hmm. going on at that exhibit. And so we were standing literally at the very first exhibit. We just walked in and my mom uh, kind of, you know, nudged me and I, we saw this person come walking out of a, a door and, and uh, lo and behold, it was Siegfried. And, uh, you know, he was you know, interacting with the Tigers and he come out and uh, was doing just some talking to them from the outside the bars. And my mom said, good talk to him. And I said, no, I'm not going to be that guy. And she said, well, then I'll do it. And she walked over and she said, you know, my son's a magician and just would love to talk to you. And he grabbed her by the arm and, and walked over to me and said, uh, you know, obviously I knew who he was and introduced myself and. Uh, he grabbed her and I and, and walked through the entire uh, enclosure and told us every exhibit, you know, what everybody else was listening to in their in their uh, headset. Uh, Siegfried was telling us, you know, where they got it, why they got it. Uh, it was <laughs> it was magical. And, uh, you know, we had just missed Roy. Uh, he had been there just before that. So it it was uh it was magical and uh, i gotta tell you heather it, uh, it was a uh, uh just uh probably something i'll never forget especially now they're you know they're both gone so yeah well, actually so is my mom so the, all three oh, of them were gone. i hear that well it's one of those things that just goes to show how important it is when someone that you look up to takes the time um my son just we were down in florida and he he loves wrestling i mean he is everything's wwe right now <laughs> Uh, Spencer Lee from Iowa wrestler. He thinks he's him half the time, but uh, he got to meet Hulk Hogan down at his beach shop and he took the time. He pulled Leo up, spoke with him and I got it on video and Leo's eyes is just huge. And now whenever he meets someone new, he's like, so I met Hulk Hogan. That's like his opening line. So, I mean, it's, it's huge when people take the time to say hi and to their fans. Yeah, because I got to tell you, I've met other people that I thought were amazing and, uh, you know, they they are they weren't. I mean, uh, yeah. it's it's something that 
I, I know that at a certain point you can't say hi to everybody. Uh, you know, I, I even David Copperfield, who I've seen several times, uh, you know, he, he the very first time I saw him, he was signing autographs. There was a, a bodyguard here. He was in the middle sitting on a table. So uh, the table, you know, was was in front of us. And then he was sitting on a chair on the table. And then there was a bodyguard on the other side. So you'd hand something to the bodyguard. They'd hand it to him. He'd sign it. He'd hand it to the other yeah. bodyguard and then they'd hand yeah. it to you. So, and he had music blaring in front of you, you know, to where if you'd ask him a question, he probably still couldn't hear you. He'd just kind of, you know, scribble his, his name. And, and I, you know, I know he did it. I know it was him, but uh, it was one of those things where there was no, you know, interacting. Mm -hmm. and, and, but he wasn't one of the, the rude people. Uh, just, uh, you know, you just can't talk to everybody. Right. So the fact that, you know, people like Hogan or, uh, you know, in that case, Siegfried, you know, do that sort of thing. Uh, one interaction has probably caused, you know, thousands of people to hear that story either, you know, through mm -hmm. uh, what we're doing now right. or uh, previous broadcast or whatever. And and it, whether you believe it does or not, it has cachet to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, right. it without a doubt carries you. You know, it does because bad news is the same way. You know, yeah. you you have bad press. And it it travels and, and right. many times faster than the good stuff. Yep. So um, I think that goes back to uh, like uh, Barnum. You know, they they said that, you know, back in the day he had a, a train track that went by his house and he would go out whenever he knew the train track was going, uh, the train was going by and he would plow the, the fields with an elephant. And <laughs> he didn't plow his fields with an elephant. He only did it when the trains were going by. But he knew that that was going to, you know, get a lot of word that, oh, my God, you know, P.T. Barnum plows was filled with an elephant, you know, so that when it when the word got back to the next town, you know, that he was possibly going to be going to the the rumors were already starting. You know, right. but he didn't he didn't plow his, his field with an elephant. He just wanted people to think he did. You know, so that's what made him the greatest show. Right. Marketing. Marketing well, we need you to mark down February the 29th, 2024. I think you're going to be doing some magic in Columbus, Ohio for us. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we have a conference that day there. So I'm thinking we're going to have to get on the phone and do something and have you in there to do a little something for us there. I think that'd be a great time. Maybe I'll juggle for you. I don't know if I want to do magic for a whole group or not. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll figure something out. Uh, what does success look like for you? I know we've kind of just covered a broad array of topics so far, but what does that look like to you? And it might yeah, be a timely. Like, why did we pull this guy's string? He won't stop talking. No, I love it because there's so many things you hit on in my mind. I'm gathering that, but I want you to define it for the audience. Success for me guys is, uh, um, freedom and, and autonomy. Uh, you know, being able to do what I do and have the toys around me. My coworkers have four legs. You know, uh, I, I love the fact that I can pet a cat or go out and take my dog out. And I know that uh, the clients that I bring on, whether it's somebody like Randy or, uh, you know, I do uh, a, a national tape company, international tape company, uh, the, the clients that I have, they they give me that autonomy to quite literally go off and, and do anything that I want as long as it represents their brand in a positive way. And so uh, having that time and financial freedom, uh, you know, I left a, a, a position that really was a um, very bad job for me. It, it was a, it was a nightmare, uh, very, very poor, poor, poor uh, uh, experience, but it, it led me to doing what I'm doing now and, uh, you know, like I said, the, the freedom, the autonomy of having uh, um, the ability to do what I want, when I want, and kind of, you know, I, I'll steal this from Adam Carolla. He says, you know, he has a pirate ship. And because of that, you know, he's the, he's the captain. And if, if he wants to do whatever he's going to do, he does it. And if you don't like it, walk the plank. Uh, I don't have that necessarily kind of add to where it's flip it. But I do love that freedom of being able to do what I want, when I want, how I want, you know, with who I want, not have a glass ceiling on finance, not have to ask, you know, permission for vacation, not have to worry about a sick day. I know that the information has to be done. And as long as I do it and I do it the way that I said I would do it, that, you know, life is good. So I would say that that 
for me is success. Great answer. And you know, it's interesting is it, it success looks different to everyone. And I think sometimes you see, uh, and I get this just because I'll have somebody who's maybe, you know, they've worked at one job their entire career. And then at the end, they're like, well, we should have tried this or we should have done that, or I didn't take any risks. But you know, the fact was he, you know, they were happy doing that. It was to them, it's still, they were successful. They weren't a burden to anybody else or on society. So uh, that's why I like to ask that question. I think it's interesting to hear the different answers that people will give. But the bottom line for me is people need to define that for themselves. And it really needs to become part of what their mission in life is. And what does, you know, if they can define their mission, they can probably define what success looks like and they can give them a target to work towards it because what it looks like for you is, you know, going to be different than what it looks like probably for your wife or somebody else. You know, I mean, you're, it's just, that's human nature and that's why we're unique in, the, in that way. But I love that answer. So we want to thank Gary Bontrager Consulting for being a sponsor on the Mindset Growth Podcast. There's a variety of services they offer. They have human resources for one. They have a sales program. They also work with the financials, whether you need to help set up your QuickBooks or go with a high level person that can help you do benchmarking, budgeting, and the likewise. They also do a lot of leadership training, whether you are the business owner, manager, or are just leaders in departments, they can tailor those packages for you. Reach out to them for a free consult and they will see what your needs are and offer different opportunities for you to put in motion to take your business to the next level. They have been successful over the past few years in helping organizations not only grow, but grow as much as two, three, and 400% in a 12 month period. Certainly, they understand it takes a strong foundation and there are years where there may be no growth leading up to this as they put the right pieces in place. Reach out to them at www.garybontrager.com. You can reach out to them on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter and get the free advice that they offer. And that may be just what you need to set you on a different path to lead you forward and be successful in your business and your life. We appreciate them supporting us. What's the best thing that your company does? I like the idea that my market you first mentality uh, is the kind of cornerstone of what I do. Heather, I, I, I'm not the, you know, buttoned up, you know, guy, obviously I'm sitting here in a t-shirt, I'm wearing shorts. Uh, sometimes it's pajama pants. Uh, but the that. thing is, is uh, I said something beforehand to you guys, uh, you know, before the, the uh, necessarily the show started. And, and I said, I'm the kind of guy that stabs you in the front. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I love the fact that, you know, when I tell somebody that they're going to get an individual package, that's exactly what I try to do. And, you know, I, I try to deliver a, uh, a package where I'm the muse and I can bring out what is good about them, not about what they're, they're doing. Uh, years ago, a, a, a person, you know, that I was doing some self-training with, that, you know, you were asking me about training. I went through a little course and one of the things that they talked about was going through and, and having an elevator speech. It was 10 words or less. Now, when you think of 10 words, you think, oh, you know, that's no big deal, but you say 10 words, and it's not a lot. I mean, it really isn't a mouthful in any way, shape, or form. And it took a long time. And what I finally dialed it down to, and I'll, I'll be it, it was exactly 10 words, is I coach people to sell themselves, not what they sell. And I love that. You know, it, it's it's what I love about it, uh, you know, from the core, because when, it, when you're talking about like multi-level marketing or um you know, being a rep of a company or, or, you know, whatever it is, you have somebody like Randy, you know, who is, um, you know, selling barn, roof, fasteners, things like that. But you don't hear barn, roof, fastener. You hear Randy, 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 mm -hmm. Randy. He sells Randy. And that was long before I met him. Yeah, you know, he was doing that. And every great person that you ever hear 
you know, uh, with, you know, say Colonel Sanders chicken, it wasn't chicken. It was, you know, it was Kentucky fried chicken and the, the Colonel, you know, and the same thing with no matter what you look at, I, I talked about yesterday and you'd think I'd have one here, but I don't, um, you know, you don't use a, a tissue paper, you use a Kleenex and you don't use a cotton swab, you use a, 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 um, a Q-tip and, and that's a brand name uh, is what mm-hmm. they call that. And so what I try to do is I try to make it to where whatever I'm repping, product, service, or person, I try to make it a brand number to where I'm showcasing what that person that is is marketing, not what what the product or the service is. That's a great answer. I love that. I uh, kind of speechless after all that. How I mean, I can tell you're very. Uh, uh, intentional on how you approach that. And so it's, it's clearly effective. And I think a lot of the thing that I pick up if I, uh, out of that too, I've heard comments from people already say, well, I want to sell a product that sells itself. Well, at that point, you, at that point, you don't need a salesperson. You need somebody that can take orders. You know, you need a receptionist or a secretary. But the fact is exactly right. Every position, you're still selling yourself. I don't care what position in the company it is. It's whether you're going to advance or what you're doing. So I always say everything we do in life's a sales job because everything. it's I it's, mean, from the you time you meet human. your wife or your husband or, you know, you're you're trying to talk that teacher into changing a B to an A yes. you know, or a, a F to a D, <laughs> you know, or, or whatever it is. You have been a salesman, you know, uh, pretty much when you couldn't talk and you give your, you know, puppy dog eyes for another bite of food as a kid. I mean, you were selling, you know, so uh, it it is, it's a thousand percent true. Yeah. It's the only way I got through school. So I guess I learned young, (laughs) you know, uh, you're a podcaster, a producer, uh, you produce other people's podcasts. You're the founder of IRECA. Tell us a little bit about though. We talked earlier about, kind of your work history, but how did that come about? How did you get yourself in a position to do those things and decide to do those things? Because I'm not sure how long you've done it, but, you know, maybe if it's been long enough, you were early in that being something common to do. Yeah. Well, I've had a love of it, believe it or not, since I saw the first videos coming across like, uh, you know, uh, Microsoft, if you, if you remember back in the day, they were little squares on your screen and it, it moved, you know, one frame at a time, literally you could see it. And I remember thinking at my, uh, at the time, man, it, it was a company that was called Hello World uh, that was out there and it was way before its time. I mean, most places, if you were lucky, you had an ISDN line, but, you know, most people had dial up. And uh, I can remember as, as things started to kind of progress closer to Ohio, there was always like, you know, something out West that sounded like amazing. And, uh, you know, when I saw video, um, it just, it, I had a love for it, but the technology was not there yet it, out here, you know, in the, in the, in the East, um, because of uh, the fact that it just couldn't be supported. I mean, it would have been a nightmare, you know, to, to try to do a live, it, it had been just a, a garbled mess, but now, um, you know, I, it, you, you go back, uh, you know, let's say five, six years ago, uh, what happened was, uh, you know, it got a little better, you know, with, with the things that you could do with uh, green screens and, and having, you know, things like professional mics and going from, the, you know, using your phone to uh, doing it in a more professional way. And I, I kind of figured out early on that what we were talking about with uh, shuffling around and trying to figure out how to put up a, a transition or, you know, run a bumper or, you know, whatever the case may be, I could help, you know, with that. And, and so I, I got a little proficient at it in the beginning uh, enough that, you know, I was able to do it for, you know, friends. And then it led into, uh, I've done, um, I think this week is going to be 180 episodes of warehouse safety tips, which is another podcast I do uh, for the international tape company. And, you know, I, I, I just basically go through and do it in a way that uh, is probably as, I would say, technologically advanced as, as most people are going to have in their house, uh, you know, it, short of like having an actual studio. Um, I, I, I do it, uh, you know, with, you know, 
pretty high end equipment, but you know, I, I'm definitely not on the phone anymore. But uh, I, I I got into it, uh, like I said, about five, six years ago, and it's just gotten better and better as time went on. Cool. So that's the after that job you didn't like is when you transitioned into that. I did. I, I actually uh, uh, left a, a job doing customer service, you know, back in the day. And my wife said something to the effect of, you know, there's there's a company that's you know, local that would be a, a good company you know, for you, a good fit. They're doing exactly what you like to do. And uh, when I went, it, it was just a, just a really bad job. And uh, I went on a, uh, um, uh, what's it called, a chaperone uh, for my, my uh, daughter to go to Washington. And when I got home, uh, they said, uh, hey, come in and tell us about it. And, and when I did, they shut the door and canned me. And uh, so uh, <laughs> Negan was on um, uh, Walking, Walking Dead, Dead at the time, you know, hitting people with a baseball bat. And I, I come in and I said, well, I just got Negan. And she <laughs> goes, what? And uh, I said, yeah, I said, they, they got rid of me. And so it was a situation where um, I had uh, um, been doing some bartending on the weekends just to kind of make ends meet and uh, saw a client and, and uh, um, I said, uh, or they asked me you know, how things were going. And I said, uh, not, not that great, you know, uh, because I actually got, uh, got canned and, and uh, he said, well, I just canned them, uh, you know, let's talk. And so <laughs> it ended up being a situation where, you know, it was kind of a, uh, um, you know, a, a, a meeting of the minds and, and, you know, I got my peanut butter and your chocolate, you know, kind of a moment, like in the old, uh, Reese cup days. And then, uh, it, it just kind of went from there. So that was your start. That's unique. They let you go, but you pick up their client, which puts you and, on this and, path. <laughs> and, and all full disclosure, uh, the way that we had to do it because, uh, the, the same person kept me to a, uh, non-compete mm. clause, even though I was, you know, only a couple months into the job. But um, the home office was, you know, way away from uh, here up in Rocky River, Ohio, um, up in Cleveland. So because it was outside of the radius, that's who I did marketing for until that was over and then, uh, you know, transitioned them into it. So um, kept all my T's crossed and my I's dotted. But, uh, yeah, I ended up taking uh, taking that client and, and uh, um, you know, went from making, uh, uh, you know, not that great of money uh, and having about uh, 14 clients to having three clients and making almost four times the money. So wow. it was, uh, it was kind of a, a, a uh, revenge through success. <laughs> <laughs> That's the perfect type. You know, piggybacking off of uh, how you got started into this, you know, uh, what was your vision though, when you started this in the beginning, how did, how did that look or what was your thought? Were you just thinking, this is something I would do till I can find something better. Or at that point, I'm like, you're, you could visualize it. And you had a good vision of what you wanted to accomplish and do like you are today. I always have a carrot, uh, Gary. I, I, I love what I do and I do what I love. The building wins, uh, you know, Randy loves what he does. I love what I do, but we both know, um, you know, I'm not, you know, at, at the same uh, uh, age as Randy, but, you know, going through and, and selling um, uh, products and, and me doing uh, podcasting and marketing, we know that it's going to have a um, expiration date at some point, uh, not because of, of us not being able to do it well and not necessarily because it, it's gone, but because it, it'll, be, it'll be time to kind of uh, uh, transfer and, and uh, kind of arise from it. And, and what we would like to do is is turn that, like I said, into like a, a chicken soup for the soul, uh, who moved my cheese, you know, kind of a thing where we can make building wins a uh, kind of a dynasty that is not only for us, but for, you know, his family and my family to carry on, hopefully for a long time, because it's something that is just drastically needed because, uh, you know, the, the, the at the end of the day, uh, people want to know, you know, how to build wins and the building wins that we talk about isn't just podcasting or sales or anything. Like I said, it's going to be talking about building wins and whatever it is that you're doing. And so that's what we want to do, you know, going forward. So I, I would say that, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy now. And, and yeah, I did see it as being something that I wanted to do, 
but I always have something ahead of me. And the, and the reason why, you know, both of you is, is because it, it's, it, if you don't have a summit, you know, that, that you're looking at and, and you're, you know, whatever base camp you're in at the moment, um, you know, I, I feel like when people, you know, truly retire and, and, and stop, that's usually when they start to go downhill. You right. know? And, and so I, I have no intention of ever stopping. I mean, right. I, I could honestly see myself, you know, doing something, you know, in this arena of, of, you know, positive something, you know, for as long as, you know, God's, you know, granting me air in my, in my lungs. <laughs> you know, I talk about my beloved, you know, oxygen habit. That really is, uh, you know, what I think everyone should, should do in some way, shape or form. I mean, if you're in a, a job where you can do it, I think you should always be looking for what's the, what's the next, you know, check that you add to the, to the, uh, you know, to the, the, the ledger. So speaking of this positivity and staying in a, a, a positive frame of mind and, and wanting to help others, I'm going to um, move on here a little bit. So I know from researching you a little bit that you're on a journey to get yourself into shape and you're helping others to do the same. So can you tell us about that and what your motivation is to help others with that journey? Yeah, well, my motivation is to keep my beloved oxygen habit together. Um, I'd love to tell you it's to you know to you know look better for for everybody, but uh, yeah, I want to walk my daughter down the aisle one day. Uh, yeah, I want to make sure that uh, I'm keeping up with Randy. I mean, good lord, he he walks you know 20 miles a day, and and he's he's got a lot of a lot of years on me. So um, you know, just I, I would say biohacking myself to the point that. Um, I, I do want to stay around for a long time uh, is first and foremost uh, the reason. But the other thing is, is I have been on every side of, of you know, the, the, the coin when it comes to health. I mean, I've been the big tough guy that, you know, is, is you know, stronger than, than he is anything else. I've been the, the heavy guy. Uh, I am the heavy guy right now. Uh, you know, I, uh, five years ago, lost over 100 pounds and, and 54 inches, you know, doing, uh, a, you know, a program purely because of uh, a a bone that was, you know, kind of floated in front of us in the form of a contest. And I kind of babe roofed it and said I was going to win it. And I did. Uh, and then five years later, found the, the a lot of the weight back. And so I thought, you know, um, I'm tired of seeing that pop up in my memories uh, on mm -hmm. Facebook, a lot of the things that pop up, uh, give me a lot of joy. That one does not, because I look at it and I think that guy's inside of you, you dummy, yeah. <laughs> you know, you, it's time to, you know, uh, get him back. So, uh, yeah. th that's, that's the reason. It's awesome to have that motivation. And it's interesting. Yeah, it is. And, you know, and, and again, you know, uh, Heather had said something at the end of that, and that is, and, and you want to help others do the same right. thing. Uh, I do. And and by the way, not from a monetary sense. I mean, right. I don't care if somebody decides that they, you know, they're, they're going to do th th some of the same things that I did. That's great. And I'd be more than glad to help them, but I love a running partner. Right. Yeah. There's nothing like having somebody that says, Hey, you uh, were said you were going to do this. You said you're going to do that. And mm -hmm. if you can uh, make that exponentially large in the form of a bunch of people commenting, you get to help them. And I've never been in a, you know, uh, 12 step program, but, uh, you know, they talk about it, you know, some days you need the meeting and some days the meeting needs you. Well, when you have a group where you have that, that, you know, uh, mastermind kind of aspect to it and they're holding your butt to the fire and you're holding their butt to the fire and you have that running partner, uh, uh, uh relationship, mm -hmm. it is the only way, you know, to go. So you're speaking there of, of, you know, your running partner, your accountability partner, and that's in so many different aspects of life that that's important. And um, especially with keeping yourself physically motivated. But, you know, I know, Gary, you and your best friend, you have you keep each other accountable right. every Monday morning for yeah. walking each other through what's going on in life. I think, yeah, I think for, business. for an example, and that's just more from a personal, really almost a personal development, but also a business approach for five years or better. We've, you know, we both had coaches and working through a lot of things. And finally, one day we're like, 
why are we not holding each other accountable? You know, we know each other very well. We know each other's deep, dark secrets. Let's let's have that call. And we've done a Monday morning call for, yeah, five plus years. I don't imagine it'll stop anytime soon. Um, otherwise, it seems like you get off track. And I think that's the thing. And I just bring this up. And it doesn't matter, uh, for an example, uh, even for myself, I'm not in shape the way I, wa I was a year and a half ago. And somewhere I just got off track with it. And it's so hard when there's not certain markers to keep you accountable to it. And yet, you know, you want to feel healthy. You want to do all the things you just mentioned. But it's really life in general. I, I believe you've got to have that accountability in every aspect. But Yeah, and I have to tell you, food whispers to me. Uh, you know, as I yes. walk by, I hear it, you know, yeah. talk to me. So <laughs> it, it, I need the accountability of people that, you know, walk by and slap my hand. And so whether it's it's uh, literal or in my mind, I mm -hmm. think, oh, boy, I told Gary and Heather I was going to do this on, you know, right. live on a broadcast. Uh -huh. You know, so it, it, it doesn't matter how you do it as long as you do it. You right. know, I yeah. talk about the <clears throat> the slight edge all the time, uh, uh, book by Jeff Olson. And he says it doesn't seem to matter in the act of doing it, but compounded by time makes all the difference in the world. Right. And so, yeah, you know, whatever that it is, you know, all it is is slight errors of judgment or slight disciplines. And so if you can have that person in your mind where you think, OK, I told Heather and I told Gary I was going to do this. And then you have your friend that's on the side that's saying, hey, it's OK, you know, go ahead and have it. Nobody will know. Uh, I know that you guys know and I know right. that I know. Yeah, so it, immediately it's it's that smack on the hand that I needed. So you, you have to have it, and, and and I'm glad that you guys do that. One thing that's interesting for myself, and I'll just share this because we're kind of on the health kick of things. When I went through the process of physically getting in a lot better shape and losing some weight, uh, one thing I did is change my diet because I love food, and I love good food, and I grew up with the old, you know, home cooking and lard and all the pies and everything that's awful for you. I had to change how I cook and I still, I've always maintained that. So I've kind of backed off on my routine of exercise. I do it some, but not like I did, but I've been able to easier maintain my diet. <laughs> and it's made, that still has made a big difference because you, you can't just starve yourself into that you know there are healthy options and choices which i found were very effective for myself so and the thing i don't like to see is people get on like a high and it doesn't matter if it's with fitness diet at work and then they just peak out and it drops off and the thing you know you had mentioned uh uh what you did five years ago which was you know the bone that floated in front of you but I'll see people right now, popular is 75 hard. I'll see people go through that and they get to the end of it and they just stop. And I'm always going, I don't think I want to do that because I don't want to push myself so hard that I'm going to take a vacation. <laughs> I want to do it in a way that it's effective, but can become a lifestyle. So I think it's everything in life we do needs to be a balance. I think they call that porcupines in heat. You know, the, the <laughs> porcupines, what they do is they don't they don't have, you know, the same sort of, uh, you know, uh, quote unquote, love cycle as the other animals. They only do it like a, every other, you know, couple of years. But when they do it, they do it right. And then they throw on the Barry White and they, you know, they, they get they make it happen. Well, people do the same thing. You know, when right. you get it into a diet, you start to buy, you know, workout clothes, uh -huh. you throw out your other clothes, you, you know empty out your refrigerator, you fill it with, you know, health food, you join the gym, you know, go on, you start buying, uh, you know, all the, the tight fitting, uh, you know, exercise clothes and the jump ropes. And, you know, you join, you know, this and you do that. And I think that by doing that, people think that they are accomplishing something, but they really aren't, you know, right. they, they, they go all in and they always say that that's why a one-time offer works so well, because if you hit people when they're already buying in that, in that, porcupine and heat, you know, kind of a, a mentality, you got them. And right. so um, the problem is, and you and Heather has probably seen this since she's kind of dug through, uh, <laughs> one of the other concepts that I try to operate within is a new you day. And where that come about was exactly what you were talking about. People get these resolutions that they say, and it, actually that one's the worst one, but they'll say, 
I'm going to start Monday right. or I'm going to start after we get back from vacation or when the kids go back to school or, yeah. or, 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 yeah. but the worst one is the resolutions. So I bought the domain name and, and concept of, of new you day years ago, because instead of a new year's day, making those resolutions, having that instant reset, where if you fall off the wagon, instead of saying, okay, I've obliterated what I said I was going to do. I'm just going to might as well just eat the mm -hmm. cake or do whatever. Instead of having that mentality saying, you know what? I had a skip and a, and a hiccup time to get back on the horse. Right. Okay. And having a new you day. And so that's where that whole idea come from was instead of, you know, waiting till a time that is, you know, convenient for you after a certain time or whatever the case may be, having that instant reset where you just immediately go back into it. Now, with that said, you have to also follow that mindset. <laughs> so right. uh, even though I come up with it, uh, you have to put it into action. So, uh, you know, uh, but it, it's a great thing if you follow it. And we have a lot of business owners listening to this. So the, we're talking here about fitness, but I, in my uh, coaching business, I have had business owners hit like 200 plus percent growth and set a goal to not grow the following year. It's like they did the same thing in their work environment. They peak and then they just want to sit back and they think it's going to keep replicating itself. And I would just challenge anyone when you're in those those phases, try to figure a balance out in that because it doesn't do any good to have huge growth one year and not even set a growth goal for the next year. So those are just some things that I think we can challenge people with. Uh, where can people find you if they want to uh, learn about, you know, what it is you do and like maybe hire a magician? <laughs> <laughs> Well, the magician thing is usually for friends and, and very uh, uh, intimate situations because I, I am an amateur now. magician <laughs> at best. I, I, I do make food disappear. Randy will tell you that. Uh, but uh, if you go to westwyatt.com uh, or West Wyatt, uh, you know, at West Wyatt, pretty much on any of the social uh, platforms, uh, you can find me and, and uh, you know, don't expect to find a bunch of flash or, or uh uh, you know, uh, super marketing, because I am very much that uh, cobbler guy, uh, Gary, I, I, I make shoes for everybody else. And I'm walking around barefoot. Uh, but uh, that that's a great place to find me is, is pretty much at West Wyatt uh, uh, across the board. Anything you want the audience to know, or anything thoughts you want to leave with them? I, I mean, the biggest thing we've already covered, uh, Gary and, and, and Heather, I mean, that, that is, just it, number one, if you're not doing something that you love, uh, leave. Uh, and I'm not telling you to go in and tell your boss to, you know, pound sand. Uh, what I'm saying is, is, is put a, a literal, you know, concept in your mind that you are going to get to whatever it is that you want to do uh, at, uh, in, in a, a, a very, uh, um, I guess, you know, reasonable time. And, right. and if that means getting uh training, uh, doing self-learning, whatever, having a, I'm, I'm going to get out of this, you know, whatever that is at some point and, and do what you love. Uh, and the second thing is, is, is have a attitude of I get to rather than I have to, mm -hmm. uh, right. you know, because there's so many things I, I, I had to, uh, uh, do this. I had to do that. I had to, I had to, when you hear people say that, um, the other day I got to go to the vet and pay over a thousand dollars for my dogs. Uh, you know, it, that is something that, you know, you can sit around and think, oh man, number one, what am I going to do Two, uh, there's a thousand other things I'd rather, you know, spend a thousand dollars on or, or whatever you can sit around and lament and, and worry about that. Or you can say, I get to, like I just did. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that, uh, Gary and Heather is, is, if you say I have to, or I, 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 you know, it, it's, it's a must when you do that, your mind is going to say, uh, you know, instead of, if you say I get, it, it's like, you know, it, it's almost like, well, what do we it's get privilege. to do? And, and I just, I think that it might be a, it might be a sneaky way to try to trick yourself if you want to look at it that way, or you can look at it in a, in a glass half full way of, you know, I wouldn't have, you know, uh, the ability to have a house to, to get to pay a, 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 a vet bill to get to, um, 
do whatever. If, if, you know, there's people that are, are walking, you know, five miles to get water. Yeah. I mean, right. I walk, I get to walk over and turn a knob. I mean, right. so I think that having that get to attitude instead of, uh, I, I have to, and, and, uh, doing something that you love and, 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 uh, just having that, um, esprit de corps about your life as opposed to the, uh, you know, I, I just think that's where it's at. Right. Well, I thank you for sharing that. I think uh, one thing that's important for folks to know is our mind is the most powerful muscle in our body and it can be trained just like your biceps or any other muscle in your body. And so attitude and approach take a huge difference in how your outlook and outcome in life will end up being. So I appreciate your time, Wes. Uh, this has been absolutely a thrill for us and uh, getting to know you better. I know it's been beneficial to those folks that are listening to it. So with that, I want to thank you for joining us on Mindset Growth Podcast. Mm-hmm.